Okay. Howdy. Um, we are focusing on family search. And the reason is because what we've discovered, what, this is me, I've discovered over the past couple of years, actually, is that most people have never been told how family search works. You know how to get onto it, you search, you might use a few of the things, but nobody has explained to you how the program works. In other words, why it's there and how it, how it, you do, what you can learn from it. So we're going to go through some of the features of the program. Uh, particularly, we're going to talk about, by the way, this series will go on and on. This series will go on and on for whenever, until I pass out. Or <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, that's not likely to happen. Um, but basically, we're not going to talk about family tree. We'll do that in a separate class because that takes a lot of explanation. There's lots of questions about family tree. But now we're just going to talk about the program, FamilySearch.org, by itself. Of course, you have to be signed in. Uh, you either have to have an LDS account or what they used to call family search account, but just an account with family search because some of the some of the um, resources that we look at are only available if you're actually signed into the program. Uh, that's mainly due to the restrictions of copyright or ownership or whatever you want to call it of the records from the original suppliers of the records. So you may run into that occasionally. Okay, well the basic of the the basis of this program and what I call the core product is the record collections. And these are uh, records that have been gathered uh, from a couple of different sources. First of all, the first source is microfilms that began back in 1938 with the Genealogical Society of Utah began microfilming around the world and eventually had accumulated about 2.4 million rolls of microfilm which they then put in the granite vault up in Little Cottonwood Canyon. And about 10 years ago, more or less, they began the process of, of trying to digitize those records. Obviously, the technology was not there yet, and it started to get better and better. And they've been basically pushing the edge, or even implementing or in, improving on the technology of transferring these rolls of microfilm into images that can be read on the computer. Or digitized images is what we call those. We turned them into little pixels instead of film. Now, the process is pretty simple. They put the rolls in the machines. The, the machines go by very high speed, take a picture of each of the frames. And so what you have in most of the cases on Family Search is reproductions, literal reproductions of the microfilm rolls. So if you were to go pull a microfilm, which is, by the way, no longer available once it's digitized, but if you were to look at a microfilm and it got digitized, you'd have exactly the same set of, of images that you have from the film. Um, but we've got a couple of three, three different um, ways of looking at the, at the records here. And if you want to look, for example, to give you an idea of what's happening, if you click over here on the last updated, where it says that at the top, it sorts it by date. And since this morning, uh, there's been five more record collections dumped into this program. So day, and the, day after day, multiple times a week, you're getting millions, uh, millions and millions of records put into family search from that sort, from the scanning. Uh, the second source of these records is the, the record acquisition missionaries who are out around the world on different assignments, taking digital pictures of all of the um, of the resources. So if you if you have the um, so what they have is they have big cameras. They go out. Previously, they were using cameras that were like fifty thousand dollars, sixty thousand dollars cameras. Uh, the same resolution, same quality. Now get in a three thousand dollar camera. So there's they were. They had 300 group, 300 missionaries, and they said by the end of this year they were trying to raise that to around 600 missionaries, which I'm assuming they will continue to expand as they get people that work there to do that to volunteer. Well, so you have three different things here going on. First of all, 
to what you have is um, uh, down the side here you have little icons and these little icons, the little camera icons, uh, by the way, just a kind of an aside, um, originally when I was presenting these classes I was in a webinar some time ago, quite a while ago, and I said, and then you look at those little black blobbles on the side and that means there's an image. And so I got, the next day or two days later, I got an email from Family Search Guys who said, we're watching your webinar and we can't figure out what you said. What was that term you used? And I said, well, it's a highly technical term, blobo, <laughs> meaning some indistinguishable little, little black dot. And they said, oh. And so a couple of days later, they sent me a, a bunch of different icons. <laughs> and they said, which one do you really like? <laughs> and I said, that one, and that's what they've got. <laughs> so now they kind of look like cameras. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're improving, you know, we're improving. But the point, the reason I bring that up is because Family Search and all the other companies are basically, they, they're driven by people making comments. In other words, you've got to go in and comment. So the more you comment about it, the more likely you are to get it changed. If everybody's coming in about the same thing, then that becomes a big issue, so they do work on that first. So priority is established by comments. So we need to do that. Um, okay. So that means there's an image. So if we were to look at this one or any of these, we would see that there were a number of images. Over here, you have a number that, has, that tells you the record count. Up there, there's one called Illinois Cook County Birth Certificates, 1878 to 1938, and it has no camera, which means there are no images, which implies that this is an index. It's an extracted index of the records. So you could just look here and see, but this is a little bit deceiving because it says records here, and yet if you look at this, and I'll click on that Belgium one because I've used that as an example now a couple of times. If you click on the name right here, then you get a, a sheet that says, gives you a little bit of information about the record, but you'll look down here and there are 3,652,361 images, but back in the list of records, there were only 8,000 of those records that have been indexed. So what they're saying there in that column is the number of indexed records. So here's the point. The point is that number one point is that if we go back to the, the list, um, what we see here is a whole bunch of ones that say browse images, browse images, browse images. What that means is that those have just the images. You can't, they're not indexed. So if you do a search on Family Search and you search for your name and you put in your name in the search field, you're not searching those records at all. You are only searching the records that are indexed. And so only about a third of the records are indexed. So two thirds of them are. So your people come in and they'll say to me, oh, I searched on Family Search, they don't have anything about my family. And I said, well, how did you do that? They said, oh, well, I just went in and put in the names and we didn't find any records at all. And I said, well, you've only searched about probably a fourth or a third at most of the records. So maybe if you went back and looked at all the different microfilms there, you would find more records about your family. So that's, that's one thing that we ought to be extremely aware of when we go in here is that we're not really searching. And it goes to, and a question was asked this morning about if you do that search for records link off of your family tree. It's only searching the indexed records. That's the only way they have of going into those records. Other than looking, having somebody look personally at each image. Are these non-indexed records in some sort of logical order where it would actually be possible to go through? Because if it's browsing three million records, I'm done. Okay. The, the answer is, the question is whether or not there's any of these records that are in some kind of an order. Well, let's look at them. If we go into this record from Belgium and we, we click down here on browse the images, then there's a whole bunch of names of towns. Okay. And so we can go to Brussels. So it is so and then we have a whole bunch of different names of types of records here, okay. like birth records, death records, all sorts of records. 
marriage records. And so then if we look at the book, any of the ones that apply to the time period that we're interested in, then we can come up with the role of microfilm. And then if I just put in a number here, just jump out here a ways to a different page, then you're going to be able to see the actual records. And then this one, yes, you would have to go through. But what you're going to find as you go through these records is that they are in chronological order. And so if, as you start looking, you'll be able to continue to find the records. So I can narrow it down. Yeah. And I, yeah. I won't hit exactly the right one, but I, I, I'm going to be in the right yeah. place. You're going to look at it. And essentially, when you get to this point, what you're doing is you're looking at one roll of microfilms. This one roll has like 910 images on it. but I'll go through 910, but I won't go through 3 million. Yeah, well, you could try to go through 3 million. That'd be fine. Yeah. That's all you wanted to do for the rest of the year. Yeah. Um, okay, but this, you know, this is really um, the point at which you can get. Now, I've had people say to me, I mean, literally, I just, I can't understand this. Anyway, I've had people say to me things like, "Oh, well, I really like the old microfilm because I like the microfilm." And I go, <laughs> <laughs> "Well, I really like riding a horse too, but that didn't mean I give it up for my car, you know." It's not really the same thing. And, and right, with these, you can save it. I can download a copy of that. I can print it. I can turn it. I can rotate it. I can do all sorts of things with it. You know? And I can zoom in and see it higher quality than I can on any microfilm in those black boxes staring at those things with my neck going, Arr. you know, that isn't going to work. So basically what we're doing is, is we're looking at, at these records. now. What's, what's kind of the key here? What's going on? Let me think if there's something that I... Let me go back to the records point. Uh, comment. Yeah. Um, if you are looking for wells, mm -hmm. uh, you probably know when your ancestor died or about. Right. Since all those are chronological, you don't need to search them all. You look for that exact date. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was hoping he would yeah. tell yeah. me. No, that's, that's the way it happens. You're, you're hoping, of course, that they were all kept in order and that when they were imaged, that they were in some kind of chronological order. The real answer to this is always go to the end of the roll, of both, whatever set of images. When you're doing microfilm, the old rule was always go out to the end of the roll because you don't know that they didn't stick some extra images at the end of the roll. Got it. And sometimes there's an index with the roll. Yeah, yeah and, and they have the problem with the, any index, including the indexing done by anybody. I'm not just criticizing anybody, but all the indexes, you always want to go look at the original record if it's available, because you never know if they've indexed it properly. Uh, uh, the tenor, uh, of course, I've done a lot of this. Uh, the date inside of the record is different than on the top, mm -hmm. and the index is at the top, so it differs two, three days. Yeah. yeah, she's saying that the index might be different because the dates can be different on the records than they are. Uh, it might be a book, like for example, the book might say 1830, but then when you get into it, started in 1829 or 1827 or whatever. No, not so much that. It is, for instance, if they say 19th of August, the index 19th of August, then the, the actual event happened the 17th or the 16th of August. Oh, yeah. So it's the date that is different. Yeah. Because they have to, uh, they have to go to the, uh, to, to the city hall within 48 hours. Right. So it can differ quite a bit. Okay. So there's the difference is the recording date. What you're talking about is the date that was actually recorded, as opposed to the date of the event. Right. And that always a problem. You know, that's one of the challenges we always have, basically, in uh, in genealogy. Okay. So. So now if we go down through the list, now the first thing we want to do is make sure we understand what we're looking at here. We're looking at all the records and over here are the different places so we can, we can uh, bring that down for instance to the United States, then we could come down here to Utah records and then we can see that there are only these um, 27 different records and as you see here in Utah, even with just these 27 records here in Utah, we got Colorado and all sorts of things. Okay, well, we got Utah to the top. 
Um, but all of these records from Utah, you can see there's still plenty of them that are the browse only images, which means you would still have to go through those records one by one if you wanted to see if your people were there in that particular area. Now okay. you clicked on last updated. If you go over and click on title, will it put them in order? So Utah's all together and you don't have anything to mix with. Um, those are all Utah. I just sorted them by, there's a filter over here on the left hand side, and I just filtered out the, oh, okay. the Utah records. Oh, okay. And now I can, I can also click down here and say I only want collections with images, and that will pull up <laughs> just the images. Oh. Or I can have all of them looked at. Oh, okay. Whether or not they have. So these are these are um, extracted or indexed records. Okay. Now, if we go to this records and we want to find out a little bit more about the record, the next thing we want to do is, let's say, for example, I want this Utah naturalization records, and I want to find out about it. Well, first of all, there are 2,000 of these in the collection. But up here, in every record, there's a little link that says Learn More. And the Learn More link takes you to the research wiki. And what that will do will tell you the record description, the record content, what types of the, the fields of the record, how to use the record, uh, useful information, tips, related websites, what's been contributed, citations for the collection. Sometime it'll tell you uh, which records are missing from the collection. Uh, what the limitations of it are. So what you've done here is you've gone to a page and there's a page for every single digitized record that you just can go to find out further information about the record. Now if you want to if you want to go further with that record, understand the process, and I'll talk about this a little more when I get to the catalog, but right now what I could do is I could take that title of that record and I could pop out here to Google and put that in as a search. So now what I've done is I've, I'm moving beyond simply looking at these databases, the lists of, of records, as a list of records. I am looking at it as if it were a finding aid telling me a type of record that I might want to find. So if I go further and I do a search on that on Google, then that's going to tell me if there's any place else out there that I might want to know about that has naturalization records. So here's archivesutah.gov, here's searchancestry.com, here's another one, naturalization records, Cindy's List, all sorts of naturalization records out there. Archives.gov's got them. Um, Okay, so there's a whole list of different websites out here that would be additional naturalization records other than the ones that I just found in Family Search. And I think that you know that, that we'll use that process here in just a minute. But let's let's go out here to the, the let's jump from this to the catalog. Now you recall when I started talking about this, I said that the records were in the process of being digitized. Well, that means that there's a huge pile of microfilms that are still sitting in the family history libraries around the world that have yet to be digitized. So we have here at the, at the Provo Library, at the BYU Library, we have you know, different places around the world. And what's happened is this is no longer called, it used to be called the Family History Library Catalog. That's what we always called it, F-H-L-C. <laughs> and we don't call it that anymore. It's called the Family Search Catalog. And the reason is because right here, there's a link that shows you that they're incorporating, in the process of incorporating, all of these different libraries around the world from the Family Search Centers into this catalog. Now, that's an ongoing process, and it's going to be ongoing as long as we're alive, because we'll keep getting new books, and they'll keep getting cataloged, and they'll keep getting included, or new records, and new manuscripts, and everything. So it'll just continue to, to be a process of cataloging all this. 
But the point is, is that you need to be aware of this because the records may be available in your location, wherever you happen to be doing research. You might not have to go to Salt Lake or order the film or do anything. It may be sitting here in this library. And so what you might want to do is search their catalog. Now, the Mesa Family Search Library, where I was just working, all of our microfilms had been incorporated into this catalog. It was complete. We'd done everything. All the cataloging had been done. But there are libraries like this that maybe they're not all yet in this catalog, or they may be new ones. So you might want to check the local catalog once you know that there might be a chance that there are records there. Okay, any questions about where the records are located? Okay, now, <clears throat> let, me, let me kind of explain how this works. Um, this is somebody's life, okay? Here's birth and their death. And so you've got a little guy here, maybe I can draw one that isn't crippled today. Uh, there we go. Oh, his neck's off. Oh, well, he had a bad neck injury. Um, our, guys, our guys moving along this path from birth to death, and as they do that, there is a cloud of records that are created around that person. So, when, from the time you're born till the time after you die, for even a period of time after you're dead, people continue to cr create records that pertain to you. Now, if you were a long, long time ago, you know, let's say 200 years ago, the record set might be really tiny. Might be just a little tiny bit of records. If you're today, the record set's probably something like that. And maybe even so big we can't draw it on the board. So what happens here, and, and, and if you're thinking about today, every time you move, you're creating a record. I mean, if you just go out your front door and get in your car and drive, you're probably creating a record. You don't realize that, but that's what's happening. I mean, every time you buy gas, every time you go to a store, every time you go out to eat, every time you, you know, go to the hospital, go to a doctor, uh, anything you buy, everything like that gets recorded. Out by everybody. And even if you're just driving in your car, there's probably a security camera, a camcorder, or whatever sitting there watching you move wherever you're going. So you're creating this huge cloud of records that comes with, with living today. But as we get older and, and as time passes, they get smaller and smaller until you get back to a point where they just kind of disappear. There aren't any more records that are reliable about individuals. Okay. Now, <clears throat> suppose that we have all these records. Understanding how the records are created is crucial to doing genealogy because we need to know where they come from. And the two things that are important are a place and a time. Every event that happens happens at a certain place on the earth with a certain at a certain time. And so we're going to create records or we're going to be created according to the place and time. And they're created just like pancakes. They go up in little pancake piles. And let's see, there we go. And there's a little whipped cream on top. And do you like raspberry or regular log cat or um, maple syrup? What do you want? Oh, it's okay. We're not, we're not really talking about pancakes. Um, so we have our little pile of pancakes here. And we have a place and a time. Now, these are coming from the top. We're going to look at it from the top down. And this would be a national record. And a national record would be like, mm, you know, what? In the United States, it would be a military record or a federal income tax record, social security record, um, Indian reservations, um, anything that had to do with the federal government. Okay, and those records would be kept at the federal level and they would not necessarily be kept at any other level. <coughs> Get that? Okay. So then we move down. <clears throat> in this case, in the United States, we move down to state. And this is, corresponds to any country in the world, any place in the world, any time that anything occurred. So the, the trick here is identifying these jurisdictional piles of records 
that work from the time period that you're talking about. So let me I'll illustrate that in a second. So here's the state. So we got US and then you have state records. So we're moving down the pile. What records do we have at the state level? We have currently we have, for instance, birth and death records are kept at the state level. Okay. So then we go down another level, we're down to the counties. County records, marriage records. Typically today. Okay, but in your country, in your jurisdiction or whatever, you'd have to be able to understand at which level each of those records were, were created. Who had the records at, the, at those levels? Naturalization records. Yeah. So then you get down here, you're talking about smaller branch municipalities, perhaps, townships, the kinds of things that are smaller than counties but bigger than where the person lives. And then you're down to personal records. Down to records that are created on the individual local level, like business records or licenses or um, insurance records or the list goes on and on and on and on. Okay, so what happens is that people will come to me and they'll say, my family, I've been doing research, we've been doing research, my family's been doing research, we've hired all these people, and we have been looking for my great-great-great-grandfather for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, you know, and we have looked everywhere. And I always go back and say, I, always have, I, I have a lot of things I could say to that, but I, I used to say this. I used to say, um, so how did you like the New York Public Library? And then they would go, why did they send me to this crazy person? <laughs> and then I would say, well, of course you know the New York Public Library is one of the largest genealogical repositories in the United States of America, and if you had lurked everywhere, you would have looked in the New York Public Library. And they go, oh, I, get to, I think I'm understanding what you're saying. You're saying that I probably haven't looked everywhere. I'll say, well, no, and I don't think it's humanly possible, so I'm really not ever worried about anybody who says that me actually knowing what they're talking about. And so we start and look. Now, now we're going to switch over to the catalog because this is going to help us understand this pile of pancakes, but it will help us to understand how this works. What the catalog is really telling us is it's teaching us how to be genealogists. It's teaching us how to do this work. And, and you've got to understand that you're being taught when you're using the catalog. And so you go to the catalog to look for a specific information, you're always saying, well, I'm going to go search, I'll look and see if they have a book, or if they have this microfilm, or da 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 da, but then you're missing the lesson, you're not being taught the lesson of the, of the catalog. So let's see what it says. First of all, you'll notice it comes up with a default that says places. Why is that? Because they understand this little principle right here. And that is that the records you're looking for are going to be associated with a place. So we start with a place. Anybody got a place? Where would you like to go today? <clears throat> hmm? Yorkshire, England. Yorkshire? Mm -hmm. England? Now, you used to put things in just with your, your city, but then they changed it so you had to put the country first. And I don't know what they're doing now. Okay, <laughs> okay, so here's, here's what we're talking about. We're starting up here at the top of the records. And what we know is that there are going to be some records that are available only from the country. So when we start out with that, we're going to start out with England. Okay. So you're going to start out with the country. Yeah. Okay, so now we're here to the country. And if we click on that and do a search, we're going to see all the, all the counties. A few, eventually, when this ever comes up, if it ever comes up. Okay, we were having trouble in that. In that. And we may have just crashed, and which may be the end of this class, but otherwise, <laughs> no, I don't think so. There we go. Okay, so now we have this huge, long, humongous list of categories of different kinds of records that they have that have been categorized. This is show more. And now we keep going down. And when we get down here a ways, then we get down and down and down. And then we show some more. And then we get down and down and down, and now we're finally to the bottom. These are all the different categories of records that they have categorized out of England alone. Okay, now this is going to be the same with any other country. 
So you're started with England and you have all these records. So what does this mean? It means that if you look at each of these records, if you were to look at one of these records, you would see a time period involved. And if the record is in this category and it's during your time period, that's a record you need to look at. So you have a long list of records out here. So if I go down here to, to uh, for instance, if I go up here to NM military, maps, land, history, parallel generalology, all sorts of things up here, and I go up here to church records, I have all sorts of different kinds of church records, but I have a huge list of church records from the, from the country. And these are back in different time periods. So I can just look down through here and see if there is a record that corresponds to some place I would, my people would have been during that time period. Now, I'm not going to make any assumptions. Basically, I'm going to say this record is a candidate for search if my person lived in England during that time period. Because I don't know yet until I look at the record or the description of the record whether or not that's the case. So I might want to just keep looking at all the descriptions to find out how they, how they correspond. So let's say this one. And it tells what it is and so forth. And so we can get down here and see where it is. It happens to be sitting in Idaho Falls Family History Center. So we'd have to go look for this book. But we do that and work our way through this list. Now over here on the side of the list, you'll see a number of things that say add, 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 add. What you can do with that is you can create a list of reference area, of places, you, of records you want to look at. And just by clicking that ad, and then you can print that list off.